Hello, my name is Mike and I am one of the in-house consultants here at The Profs. And in today's video, I get to talk about how to get into Imperial College London. It's a bit different from my other videos. I'm not talking about how to get onto one specific course. I'm mainly going to be focusing on how to get into this university if you want to go there for an undergraduate degree. But in the meantime, I'm going to give some of my top tips on how to get into this very, very difficult university. So my first one actually is you've got to be strong with your mathematics for this. It is very, very academically rigorous. Um, they offer a lot of competitive, a lot of competitive courses for things like mathematics, for physics and for computer science. At least that's where most of my clients, whenever they say they want to get into Imperial, want to go to. And as a minimum grade requirement, there typically um, is an A, A star, A requirement to get in. Usually um, an A star in maths and an A in further maths and maybe an A in another science there. Um, now that is also encompassing you taking an admissions test in something. So you have to make sure you know what admissions test they're asking for. Sometimes it's a step paper, sometimes it's a TMUA, sometimes it's an MAT. The test you're taking depends on the subject. Um, if you are having to take those tests, make sure you're revising early. Do not leave it a couple of months before you take said test in order to get ready for it. I typically suggest the beginning of the summer after year 12 is where you start earliest to get ready for these exams. So TMUA preparation, you might start then, same with MAT. If you're taking the step papers, I would suggest actually looking at the step one papers right now um, and then get comfortable with the question styles that are in those papers before moving on to step two in the first time of year 13 and then maybe step three afterwards. So it's really, really important that you get your maths in tip top shape if you want to stand a good chance of getting into this university. And that actually goes into my second point. You want to make sure in whatever subject that you are applying for, you want to be able to demonstrate your prowess in that. So let's go with the maths example, just because I am primarily a maths tutor, even though I've helped a lot of people in a lot of different subjects successfully get onto other courses too. Um, if I was to do the maths, um, or actually go for a maths application, I probably would be looking into lectures that are held over the summer in really particular topics. For example, I know one student who is a massive fan of differential geometry. And at the moment, we've been looking into uh, lectures that he can attend in order to explore that more. Um, Oxford and Cambridge actually tend to hold a lot of these, uh, either in person or virtually, but it's better to do it in person if you can. Um, we've also got listed lots of different books for academic reading that can help benefit with that knowledge. Um, there's also online courses that you can do, also known as MOOCs, can't remember unfortunately what it stands for, but these are courses that you take um, that don't require specifically a, a graded assessment for them. Um, so they're really, really good experiences to be able to build on your uh, mathematical and technical abilities. So I would heavily encourage that. Summer schools are also really huge. I've got a couple of students already that are just preparing right now to go to summer school. Um, I would say at a Russell Group University um, would be really, really important for Imperial though, just to make that happen. But even more so, don't go to a summer school and just say, I've went to a summer school. You need something transferable to take away from that in order to back up your passion for your subject. So you want to be looking over your overall application, make sure that you can easily demonstrate in various facets of what you're doing that you really, really want to attend this university to study the subject of your choice. My next point actually goes into something that we as educational consultants work on quite a lot. It is the personal statement. Um, and as warned maybe in one or two previous videos, the structure of the personal statement is changing this year if you're going in for an undergraduate degree. So instead of writing an essay that is 4,000 characters long, you have to answer now three different questions for your UCAS application, it all encompassing together a net total of 4,000 characters maximum, but there is a minimum of a few hundred characters in each. And what I'm saying a lot to my clients at the moment is that we want obviously there to be a narrative connecting between all three questions, but we don't want you to be repeating your points too much 
between each question because you want to maximize that space in order to advertise your skill set to the university. And saying that, not to be too confusing, I don't want people necessarily to be listing off their achievements saying, I did this, I also did this, I also did this. Think about why is this relevant? Why is this necessary? Could I perhaps link one sort of maybe reading of a book to an attendance of a lecture? Maybe one is encouraging the other. I want to see a little bit of um, a transformation or a logic there in maybe a passion for one thing leading to a passion in another. Where is your particular sort of expertise or what you might claim to be expertise at this point before going to university? Where does your particular passions and expertise against your peers come into play when going through for one of these degree courses? If you are going in for a postgraduate degree, it's still obviously a bit different for that. You're not writing for five different universities at once. You can just write for Imperial. So I would be researching in particular what makes Imperial unique. Um, what, uh, as part of their course, do you want to study? I'd be looking into their optional modules in particular, and I'd be doing a little bit of digging. I'd be looking into what they offer on those modules, who runs those modules, structurally, how is it unique? Um, does it offer additional professional qualifications as part of that module? Do you get to network with other companies um, as part of the process? Do you get to delve into a particular topic that might relate to you, your dissertation that you've already written for your like, previous degree or are writing now? So you want to be looking specifically at what makes Imperial great. And it's not just with their academic curriculum, it's also with their extracurriculars, their student societies. You want to be looking at networking opportunities if you're going to work, or you want to be considering people that could supervise you in a, an external research projects, or maybe integrated internships um, of some sort. So finding connections within the university is also really, really huge uh, in that aspect. Now, talking about the university itself, I'm going to get on to my next point. Some of the courses at Imperial are asking for interviews as well. And sometimes it is dependent on the client uh, or the applicant rather that is going for the university. If this is you, we can still help with this. Um, I myself I find it very, very fun to be able to go over interview preparation. But there's a couple of things I can already suggest, you know, already from an acting perspective of things. So you want your posture to be good. You want to have your shoulders relaxed. So actually it's not, you know, tensed up and hunched up. You want to have your head up so that actually, if you were to imagine a piece of string attached to the top of your head, um, you, your chin is a little bit elevated. Actually, when you're looking into the camera, you're looking directly at the camera or directly at the person speaking to you, and you're smiling. Uh, I cannot tell you how important it is to remain optimistic and remain excited about an opportunity that does come. You might not be a very big personality yourself, so I'm not saying be frantically enthusiastic about what you're doing, but in comparison to um, somebody else who might be a little bit too serious and might just be acting in a way that, you know, they're just thinking about what they do say or they don't want to say too much or they're looking too much in other places, it completely changes the mood, actually, of what the applicant is like. So you want to be looking at what you're doing as well as what you're saying. Um, when it comes to answering questions as well, you may have to answer a few questions in an interview as well to demonstrate your uh, sort of abilities. I'd be looking into, again, admissions tests, not just from, well, actually not just for the course you're going for, but admissions tests from other universities too. And I might get a friend who might be slightly knowledgeable about what you're doing, and I would get them to ask you questions. I would try to get them to probe you uh, into getting the right answers because the whole point of these these interviews well a big part of them rather is not just down to do you know your stuff it's also down to how well can you develop your thoughts and ideas which is really really huge because even though imperial are very very big when it comes to like developing futures and cultivating leaders and uh, developing your career prospects they also want to know that you can very easily engage with academics that are there. So don't be afraid to get a little bit of practice in, especially um, if you've only just, or if, when you get into the position of submitting your application. I would be doing this even before you already know 
the state of your application, whether you get a conditional offer or not, or an unconditional in very, very rare cases. But that only happens when you actually have all of the necessary qualifications before moving forward. So you have to be open to that. It does not happen to everyone, but I would be as prepared as I can be in order to make sure that I give myself the best chances of getting in. And the final tip I'm gonna give in this video is references. Now, I've worked with so many people that actually have been out of touch with their university professors or they haven't necessarily had the best relationship with their teachers and references have let them down in applications. And we want to change that, but that comes with a little bit of early intervention here. So if it may be on the postgraduate side, you haven't been in contact with your lecturers that you've got your best grades in for ages, you need to be reaching out to them. You need to be reaching out to them, as well as maybe alumni from Imperial, just to get a sense of what the course is like and show interest. Um, you need to be reaching out to previous personal tutors, previous module leaders, and so on, in order to make sure that they can, on paper, say that you were one of their strongest candidates or like strongest students within a module, if that is what happened. Um, reaching out to a personal tutor, you might even be able to ask, um, actually, was I within the top 5% of my cohort? Maybe that, that's information that you can add to your overall application. Um, and actually with Imperial being competitive and sometimes even more competitive than Oxford and Cambridge, any extra information that you can have in a reference, which is actually seen as more objective than what you were writing in your application, is going to be a huge, huge benefit to you like more than you can write yourself. So we can't actually write anything on speculation. Um, I also say reach out to people early because either there's two things happen. Uh, either they take forever to be able to get back to you and they write a reference just in time and then they submit it and everything's okay. But you know, you've had that massive, massive period where you've been a little bit anxious about whether you're gonna get enough references in time. Um, a very realistic fear or they do it very quickly and they actually send back a reference to you and they may sometimes ask in the very rare occasion, this is more for postgraduate applications rather than undergraduate. Undergraduate is the teachers that do this for you. So you've got to do well in past paper tests and have a good relation with your teacher. And that's a bit easier to facilitate as long as you get along well with them. With postgraduate applications, sometimes you get your references in early. They might send you a draft and get you to check it or even in a couple of cases, I've had people say, um, could you write a, a reference for me or write a reference that you want? And then I'll have a look at it after and say that it's from me. Now, we cannot leave that to the latter stages of the application process because obviously from the sound of things, that's a lot to consider. It takes time. You're not writing about, you're actually not writing as if you were you there. You're writing as if you were somebody else. And the writing style is entirely different there. So you need that time, you need that space um, in order to be able to consider everything. If there are any mistakes, you can correct for it or you can call out on it. So don't leave it too late to get your references sorted. Um, and if you're in school, make sure you've got a good relationship with your teachers so that they can speak as good about you or like in the best way possible for your applications moving forward. But at the moment, I mean, there's so much more I can say about Imperial College London. It is one of the most competitive universities in the UK. Um, but actually, if you really, really want those juicy details, you need to get in contact with our team. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you have, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear some discussions from you. Um, otherwise, if you think that this video is gonna be useful for your friends or family, please share it. If you've liked it, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. And if you wanna get in touch with a tutor like me or any one of our subject experts on this, then please have a look at the information on screen and make sure you get in contact. And as always, best of luck with your application.